I do want to get to some of the other big stories that we have been covering today, and this actually came out as breaking news several hours ago. The ex-wife of Microsoft executive Jared Bridegan has been arrested for his murder a year and a half after he was fatally shot in front of his daughter. Prosecutors in Jacksonville, Florida say Shanna Gardner Fernandez has been charged with first degree murder, conspiracy to commit first degree murder and child endangerment. Her current husband is one of two other people who are already charged. Now Bridegan was a 33 year old software developer for Microsoft. He was shot to death February 16th of last year in a suburb of Jacksonville Beach. Silva Megardurchian is a Los Angeles-based criminal defense attorney and joins us now live to talk more about the case. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Thank you so much, Josh. Always a pleasure. Well, in this case, we were talking about it is very bizarre. A lot of information has been coming in very slowly. Now we learn, of course, that the ex-wife faces several charges. One of them is murder. But can you tell me about those other two charges and what they indicate or don't indicate? Of course, Josh. I mean, this case is unbelievably just, it's its so brazen and it's captivated the country, even, even as a Los Angeles-based attorney. She's facing conspiracy to commit murder. And what that means is she was in agreement with her other co-conspirators to actually murder her ex. The other issue is the child endangerment count, where she's charged with child abuse. The fact that this happened with a two-year-old in the car the fact that the two-year-old was in direct line of fire and the fact that the two-year-old has experienced extreme um, anxiety and PTSD, according to family, also makes that child abuse charge also very, you know, worthy of, of her being charged of it. So prosecutors are going at her really hard. And the fact that they've already announced that they're going to seek the death penalty. I mean, this case is going 100 miles per hour right now. And so she was indicted and arrested earlier on today. Now, in this case specifically, what does it say that there was an indictment prior to the arrest rather than charging her and then having her indicted somewhere down the line? I think prosecutors wanted to make sure they had a rock solid case and also that they maintained secrecy about the case. They wanted to make sure that all their I's are dotted and all their T's are crossed. What's great about an indictment, it is secret. And we have here a co-conspirator who's actually cooperating. And that I think also allowed him to be much more open about what he knew and to release information. So yeah, I think prosecutors wanna be very careful. This is a very high profile case. They wanna make sure that there's the publicity is under control, what the evidence they release is under control. They wanna make sure they have a conviction at the end of this. And it does seem extremely deliberate. The investigation has taken a very long time over a year. So I think they really really want to be careful and, and really control the information that's released to the public. And investigators on that same note haven't revealed the nature of the new evidence that led to the indictment against Bridegan's ex-wife. Is it possible that we're going to find out what the evidence was anytime soon? Or is that something that honestly could be held until this whole thing goes to trial if it does go to trial? Josh, it's hard to tell, but I will tell you because this is so high profile, because it's memorized, mesmerized the country, I do believe that prosecutors are going to want to be transparent. It's only going to help them with these high profile cases. They, you know, this woman, Shanna, comes from a very wealthy Mormon family. I don't think they want to mess this up. They want to make sure that the public remains on the prosecutorial side. They want to make sure that they're transparent about the evidence. It's not every day that we have a beautiful woman from a very wealthy family, a very religious family, who's accused of brazen murder of her ex. I mean, she obviously wasn't after the money. It seems like her motive might have been control. So prosecutors, I believe, should be transparent. I do believe the public is going to hear a lot more of the evidence involved in this case. I think it'd be very smart of the prosecution to share it with the public. How does this being such a high profile case, as we've talked about, people have been talking about it all over the country here, how does that affect the case itself, how it plays out, how it's investigated, and how it ultimately goes to trial? 
I mean, we saw this also with Lori Vallow. Lori Vallow was another very religious woman accused of the ultimate horrific murder of her children. And in that case also, the public really was so unbelievably sympathetic. And what it does is it drives prosecutors. I feel like if the prosecutors, it, it is, it's a media frenzy. It's also a public relations issue where they want to make sure that the information that is released will only help them in getting a conviction in this case. It's also not every day that they seek the death penalty, honestly, against a female. Studies show that the death penalty is usually not handed out to women. So it's really important for them to really get the public on their side. In the court of public opinion, Josh, we see cases won and we see them lost. So especially this is happening in Florida, another female, another religious female, I think they want to be very careful on how they put this forward and really get the public's passion on their side. And this is probably going to be a hard question to answer because there's a lot to this case. But what has stood out to you the most as all of this has played out and the information has come in? Josh, you're right. I mean, where do you begin? It's so brazen. I mean, it's like a movie in the execution style. You know, having a tire in the middle of the road, this Microsoft executive, he's young, he's handsome, he has a new wife, new children, driving with a two-year-old in the car. The fact that he pulls over to push a tire and in front of a two-year-old, the way that he shot and killed, and there's really no motive, it seems like that's warranted here. There was no domestic abuse allegations that seem to have come out. It doesn't seem like there's any not that he does not that any victim deserves what they get in any capacity but it just seems like a young life was just killed for no reason in front of a 2 year old who for the rest of their life is going to need counseling and therapy to i mean they already the, one of the family members said that the child was saying boom boom daddy's gone i mean talk about the ptsd and the lifelong issues that this child is going to have it's just i think all of that captivates us and it's a soap opera of reality you just don't want to live through or believe could happen i think that's what's so captivating and as we mentioned prosecutors at this point are going to seek the death penalty against her how does that change the case and really how does that play out as the process moves forward you know, it's just, I, I think from both sides, the prosecutors have to make sure they put a rock solid ba uh, case forward and also play on emotion of that jury and tell them, this is a woman who deserves to lose her life for what she did. The defense is going to take it very differently. They're going to have to fight for her life. And as a defense attorney, there's a big difference between fighting for life in prison versus fighting for your client's life. They're really gonna have to put forward mitigation, evidence that shows that maybe she wasn't a co-conspirator. They have to fight these charges like it's the only case they're fighting. And it sounds like she has the financial means to get the best possible defense out there. And trust me, Josh, we're going to hear from defense counsel. They're also going to want the public opinion on their side. They're going to want to show that this case is a case full of bias, that the prosecutors had it out for her, that she is this good woman that had nothing to do with this and maybe was roped into something. It is going to be a very intricate case. And I, just like your amazing audience, we're going to be waiting with baby breath to see what comes out. It's going to be one incredible trial. And my last question for you here is just what happens next? Where do we go from here? Yeah. Because we know there are now three suspects who have been charged in this case. So what is next? Are we getting closer to a trial if there even is one? You know, capital murder cases take time, Josh. This is gonna be a while. I don't anticipate a trial for at least a year. If the defense does their job right, they're gonna take their time and be very careful on what they do. Have all of the witnesses, all of the co-conspirators, everyone's going to be looked into. They're going to try to clear their client as much as possible. I think in the weeks coming, we're gonna have a lot more evidence coming out. What really connected her to this case and the charges 
witnesses, that's going to come out. And trial preparation, I think if the defense is smart, we're gonna have a couple of maybe press events where they will talk about or give the public a little bit of notice on what they're going to try to do to clear her name. And the other thing I'm gonna say as a tried and true 17 year old veteran in this game of criminal defense, she should not make any statements to the media. Every time we get someone that goes on ABC or any of these talk shows and they try to defend themselves, it's the best way to get an immediate conviction. She needs to stay silent and she needs to fight this case with her defense attorneys. And prosecutors need to only focus on the evidence because what it seems like to me is the evidence here sounds overwhelming. That's why they're going to the death penalty on this already and announced it so early. And I was going to ask you, what are the odds that this actually all goes to trial? But another question that comes to mind is we're talking about the death penalty. For the prosecution to say that they are going to seek the death penalty already, does that mean that a plea deal at this point is probably not going to be on the table? That's going to be the issue. So if the defense is able to find countering evidence, the prosecutors are going to want to plead this early. They're not going to want to go to a trial where they could possibly lose or get something much less. However, if they have a rock solid case, if they have rock solid evidence, they are not going to settle for anything. But if there's any indication of a non-death penalty plea, the defense is going to have to go straight to their client and tell them, look, if you lose in life, if you lose your trial, there is a possibility you will lose your life. And sometimes life in prison for most defendants is much better, of course, than getting a conviction and then sentenced to death. So there's going to be a lot of negotiating, but Josh, everything hinges on the evidence the prosecutors have. If they have enough, and they have a rock solid case, this will absolutely go to trial. They will not give any deals. They will want the conviction. So every day, this is going to be fascinating to see what comes out. All right, Silva Megardichian, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here and help break it down. Anything you wanna add before I let you go? You know, I, I, you know, as a defense attorney, you see everything, right? But cases like this, Josh, you just don't wanna see. You don't want to see a woman with children killing their ex-husband. You don't want to see husbands killing their wives. I, you just wish we come to a point where these kinds of crimes we don't need to comment on. They're so tragic. They're so unnecessary. It, it's, it breaks my heart. Um, but again, we're captivated. So day by day, Josh, it's going to be incredible to see how the wheels of justice work. Um, and I think it gives also the public a really good indication of how our criminal justice system works and how justice is given in cases like this. So just like everyone else, I'm definitely going to be listening in and, you know, it's going to be fascinating. All right, Silva, thank you again for taking the time to join us here. Thank you, Josh. Always fantastic interviews and I appreciate you and love the network. Thank you so much. Definitely appreciate you.